Hi, Rock Kids. We're still with Moses and the Israelites, and now they are in the wilderness. They've escaped from Egypt. God has delivered them from the Egyptians at the Red Sea. He's cared for them. Even when they complain and turn their back on him, he provided for them sweet water, food from heaven twice a day, everything they need, even the clothes on their back and the shoes on their feet did not wear out the entire time they wandered around the wilderness waiting to go to the promised land. God makes them wait, we saw, because he's teaching them how to trust him. And they, he also wants them to learn how to trust his servant Moses because he's made Moses the leader of these people. We said last week, God is using Moses kind of as his mouthpiece now to lead and guide the people. And he really does want the Israelites to trust Moses that when Moses gives them a message, it is a message that is coming from God. And so while the Israelites have turned their back on God over and over and over again, Moses has not. He trusts God's power. We've seen that he's been completely transformed, changed because he knows God and he's kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. And so God has been meeting with Moses in the wilderness. He does this crazy thing where he talks to Moses directly. Moses is in his presence. God gives him a message and Moses gets to deliver it to the people. Like I said, God wants the Israelites to know these messages come from God. And so he tells Moses to gather up all the people because he's got a plan. It says, then the Lord says to Moses, I will come to you in a thick cloud, Moses, so the people themselves can hear me when I speak with you then they will always trust you. So God's going to meet with Moses like he has been, but he wants the Israelites to hear him speaking with Moses this time. So Moses gets all the Israelite people together and he brings them to the base of Mount Sinai. And God's presence comes down on the mountain, the Bible says. It's covered in like smoke and a cloud. And when God speaks, it like shakes like thunder. He calls Moses up to the top of the mountain and he speaks to him there while the people at the bottom can hear. So they know that Moses, their leader, is meeting with God. And the message that Moses brings back to them is from God himself. So while Moses is on the mountain meeting with God, God gives him this list of guidelines. He knows that the Israelites really need kind of some rules, some guidelines to live by because they've already been arguing. They've been disagreeing a lot. They've asked Moses a ton of questions about how God wants them to live. And he knows that guidelines or rules are going to keep them safe. They're also going to set the Israelites apart as different from all the other nations around them because they're going to live differently than everyone else. People will be able to see that, oh, these people are different and it's because their God is different. And so what is this God all about? These guidelines are also going to serve as an agreement between the Israelites and God. Them saying, yes, we accept your guidelines because we are your people. We know these guidelines or rules as the Ten Commandments. And so God gives Moses the Ten Commandments while he's up on the mountain with God in his presence. And there's 10 of them, but the first four are all about loving God more than anything else. They say, you must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. And remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. All four of those are all about keeping God first in your life, not treating anything or anyone else as God or the most important thing, respecting and honoring God and giving him your time and your best. The next six of the Ten Commandments are all about loving others. And so they say, honor your father and mother. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely or lie. And you must not covet or want what isn't yours. Those are all about loving other people who are made in God's image. When we love others, we love God too. And so God gives the Israelites these 10 rules, these 10 guidelines. He tells them to Moses, the people here, they call out and they say, yes, God, we will live by these rules. We accept this agreement. We will be your people and we will live your way. God then writes down the Ten Commandments 
for Moses. You've may, maybe you've seen a picture of the Ten Commandments and these two big stone tablets that have the commandments written out on them. Those weren't written by Moses. The Bible tells us those were actually written by the Lord. It says in Exodus 31, when the Lord finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant written by the finger of God. So the Ten Commandments, the terms of the covenant or the agreement between God and his people, we will live by these rules, we will be your people, and you will be our God. They're written down by God's finger, chiseled into stone tablets and given to Moses to take back down the mountain. But before Moses can even get down the mountain, the people have broken the commandments. He gets down there and he finds out that while he was gone, the Israelites have gone to Aaron. Remember Moses' brother? They said, hey, I don't know where that Moses guy went. I don't know what God's doing, but we really need some gods that can lead us. And so, hey, Aaron, can you make us one? And they bring him all their gold. He melts it down and they create this gold calf or an idol that they can worship and treat as if it is God. They've broken all of those first commands about loving God and putting him first before Moses even gets down the mountain after they've accepted the terms of the covenant. You might know that Moses gets really angry when he sees this, and so he smashes those stone tablets. He has to go back up, up the mountain, and God has to write them down for him again. So you might wonder, okay, the Ten Commandments, God gives it to the people. The people say they'll keep it, but then they break it before Moses even gets back down. Why in the world would God give them a law, a set of rules that they can't keep? He knew they were going to break them. So then why did he give it to them in the first place? The thing is, we break God's law too, right? It's not surprising or it shouldn't be to us that the Israelites broke the law as soon as it's given because we do the same thing. Each and every day we break those 10 commands. If you've ever lied, if you've ever disobeyed your parents, if you've ever been jealous of somebody or taken something that wasn't yours, that's commands 1, 4, 9, and 10 broken like that. And I'd say a lot of us do those kinds of things on a daily basis, right? Every day we break God's law too. The Bible actually says everyone does. In Romans 3.23, it says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. We all break God's law, the Ten Commandments. In James 2, it tells us that if you break even just one of God's laws, you're guilty of breaking them all. And that's a huge problem because breaking any part of the law means you're guilty of breaking the whole law and the punishment for breaking the law is death or separation from God forever. And so if we have all sinned, we all deserve death, separation from God. So when God gave those laws, it makes us wonder, was he just setting us up to fail? Did he want us to be separated from him forever? Why in the world would he give us a law that we cannot keep? Well, he explains exactly why he gave us the law right before, before those verses that say everyone has sinned. It says in verse 19, Obviously, the law applies to those to whom it was given, for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. In other words, the law is given so people know that they are sinners, that they can't make an excuse that they didn't know any better or that they're a good person because they can go right to the law and say, oh, yep, broke that, did that. Oh yeah, I guess I'm not that good because I have broken God's law. I am a sinner. In verse 20, it says, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. And so God gave the law so we would see how sinful we are, not so that we'd feel bad, so we would realize there's nothing we can do to save ourselves, so we need a Savior. Our timeless truth today is the law shows us we need Jesus. It shows us we can't live by the law. We can't keep all the rules. The Israelites couldn't either. And that is supposed to show us we need Jesus. He's the only Savior. It showed the Israelites this too, because every time they broke God's laws, they had to take an animal and sacrifice it. That animal would die for their sin because the penalty for sin is death. So they would sacrifice this animal. And Hebrews tells us that that animal could not forgive their sins. 
It did not. But what was happening instead is when the Israelites would bring that animal, it would show that they had faith, trust in God as the rescuer. So they were going to follow his plan of rescue. And it was reminding them over and over and over again when they had to make those sacrifices that one day a final perfect sacrifice would come. And they wouldn't have to go back and sacrifice any more animals because Christ, our perfect Passover lamb, like we saw a few weeks ago, had been sacrificed for us. And so he was showing them right there in Exodus with the giving of the law. They couldn't keep the law, so they needed a savior. And one day that savior would come and he would pay for the sins of the whole world and they would never have to make another sacrifice again. And so why did God give us a law that we can't keep? Why did he give it to the Israelites when he knew they would break it before Moses even made it back down the mountain? Because the law shows us that we need Jesus, that we could never be good enough or do anything to save ourselves on our own. It should make us want to choose Jesus as our Savior because we realize we need him. It should make us want to live with Jesus as our Lord because he's the one who loved us so much that he gave his life in our place so that we wouldn't have the penalty that we owe for breaking the law because he paid it for us. The law shows we need Jesus.